Got a little too high there in the middle. The rain we're supposed to get yesterday did get a little bit. Definitely not what we needed. Five dollars a gallon for off-road diesel. I hope we got enough to get us to get us through the rest of the year. Well, what do y'all think of my corn crop? Boy, she looking fine, ain't she? I mean, this ground is hard and dry with this drought and high temperatures that we're seeing at one of the worst times for the corn crop. The only thing I can do is pray. I mean, it absorbed moisture, but there's not enough moisture for it to germinate. Boy, I had to put all options on the table. If I would have ignored my speedometer, I probably could have got five in. Hopefully, uh, this will be an another year where we come through fine. day to sit out here and load grain all right next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I mentioned during wheat harvest and we're gonna save some of our wheat seed and haul it off get it clean and that's what we're gonna plant this fall and uh, normally we weigh it out in the field and then dump each variety in a separate bin but it's hot as it is during the summer and as not fun as it is cleaning our grain bins I just decided we're just going to pull it straight out of the bin because we, we, we separated both our varieties into two separate bins. We were just going to uh, weigh, weigh it out of the bin and then haul, haul it off. It would, it, would save, it would wind up saving us one less bin to, to clean out uh, this summer. But I didn't think about how we were actually going to weigh it out. Used to, we could get our grain buggy up under the spout and it wouldn't have been any problems, but that loadout bin, the superstructure of it, really narrowed the, where we can where we pull in under the loadout spout and we'll measure and see if we can get this uh, grain buggy under under there as far as width wise. I don't know if we'll be able to or not. Cause we only got two ways of weighing out how much seed we need. We got scales on the buggy and then we also got our seed tender. Yeah, I can do it with our seed tender but our seed tender only holds 160 bushels and we need like 800 bushels of each variety. So it would be a long process to do it by seed tender, it'd be just a whole lot easier if we can get our grain buggy under there and then load directly onto the grain buggy. But our superstructure is about 164 inches uh, wide. That's how much clearance we got side to side. So I'm gonna measure the grain buggy here and see what we got on it. All right, we got it lined up with the outside edge on that side. And it's showing about 152 inches here. So we uh, should have a grand total of six inches clearance on either side, pulling that thing under there. So let's give it a shot. We'll go and get the first variety loaded in here. Oh, it's gonna be tight. Straight. Oh yeah, she's gonna fit all right. Hey, get in there and watch the scale. We need to put about 40,000 pounds on there, maybe a shade over. Hello, how much is that? It doesn't build up. How much is that? All right, pull up. Oh. How much now? 38,900. Pull up a hair. All right. 40,200. All right, that's good enough. All right, pull up here to the shop. All right, that's got our first variety loaded up. Now, uh, next Tuesday, we got to haul off the first load to Greenfield to get it clean. So uh, all I do is just empty the grain buggy on the truck and uh, haul it up there. And get the second variety loaded on the truck or the grain buggy, wait out, haul it up there too. We'll have our wheat seed secured for next year. Well, will you look at that? There ain't a line. Oh, hallelujah. 
All right, now we got the grain buggy situated. Got it parked in the shed. Uh, Carter's still playing around, watching the combine. Uh, we're gonna get the duels pulled off this tractor because because next thing we'll know to do with this tractor is spread fertilizer with it and the duels would run over the rows of cotton. So we're gonna pull them off and then after we get done fertilizer, probably in a week and a half or so, we're going to think about getting the hooded sprayer on here and going back over our cotton and our last post-emergence herbicide application. We'll go ahead and get these tires off and get hooked up the fertilizer buggy. <laughs> We finally got the combine all cleaned up. You know, took a solid two days of washing. She's ready to pull in the shop and get a coat of ceramic coating on it. Got the fertilizer buggy uh, hooked up and uh, made sure everything's uh, work, working right on it. Carter got the cab cleaned up, so today Zach's gonna start putting out some uh, nitrogen on our cotton. Be the last fertilizer application of the growing season for us. We got We got multiple days of a fair rain chances coming coming up this weekend over over the fourth. Hopefully we'll get it watered in. I see you guys got some good news. Uh here the last several weeks the price of nitrogen has really dropped down. So the urea that we're gonna be putting out in the cotton has dropped from just a little over a dollar per unit that we're putting out to around eighty cents per unit. So still really expensive. It should be in that forty five to fifty cent per unit range, but but having dropped down from a dollar per unit to 80 cents per unit is a is a pretty nice price break. So that's going to try and get all of our 485 acres of cotton uh, spread today and tomorrow. And uh, a little bit later on this morning, I'm going to hop on the truck and uh, pick up where he left off on on hauling. We're about half done with hauling, but uh, before I before I do that. Uh, Bayer is supposed to be out here here in a little bit with a film crew and I want to film a, a little promotional testimonial for me about about what we've seen on on the thrive on cotton so so anyway we just plugging on along trying to get all all this stuff done all right we're putting out 144 pounds per acre so we need to put our gate on two all right, that's about where we want. Then we need to adjust our shoes. All right, that's about where it needs to be. Well, as you can see, I'm not in the 18 wheeler today. We are far enough along with cotton growth that we are in need of fertilizer application so me and Matt swapped rolls today uh, I'm gonna run the fertilizer spreader today probably today and tomorrow and Matt's gonna haul up to the river uh, truck's been kind of giving me some fits the past few days so he wants to run it a day or two and see just exactly what's going on because we can't pinpoint it at the shop so he wants to go put a load on it see if he can figure out what's going on but i'm out here the inroads are just don't pay attention to them because i don't know what happened to the inroads but the meat of the field we're almost knee high in spots so we're gonna get some uh, nitrogen applied hopefully this weekend there's rain coming in hopefully we'll get some here at the shop they got like two tents last weekend whereas i got over an inch at my house 25 minutes away Hopefully that uh, rain this weekend will work it in and this stuff will take off. Well, nothing new to report here. Well, except for 
hitting an armadillo hole so hard that it uh, knocked my radio out of bracket with a uh, spacer screw in there. We are on, I'm on the uh, Smith Farm, one of the two where we didn't get over this spring for armadillos. And I just found one hard enough to bend my screw back and knock the radio out. Again, I will repeat, every armadillo in America can die. Will not hurt my feelings, not one bit. They gotta go. You wouldn't have any words of wisdom to explain why my fan RPMs just fell to the floor, would you? I was sitting here running on Porter Cable and I went from about 615 to 350 on fan RPMs. I don't have any hydraulic leaks. Check to make sure it wasn't a misreading from a wire being pinched on the harness. I've gone through everything I can think of, including turning the flow up and it still won't get over 400. Yeah, I've, I've swapped it from, from uh, that black remote to the blue remote. It's doing the same thing. That's, that's why I thought maybe it was a computer issue and it was maybe, a, maybe something wasn't reading right, but I'm getting it on three different remotes, the same thing. No, I, 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 I checked that too and everything sounded and felt fine. I didn't feel any kind of resistance on the bearings, nothing. I noticed it dropped down to about 570 and I changed, I changed over to my flow monitor to see if I needed to bump it up and then all of a sudden it dropped to like 340, 350. So much for a boring day. The main things that I watch for is making sure that my rate is going out consistently and my fan RPM stay about 600 to 625. Then all of a sudden it fell through the floor. So we'll get it back to the shop so we can figure out what's going on. All right, we'll scratch that. No fun and exciting cliffhanger for y'all on my fertilizing. It's always the simple things that you don't ever really think to check, but the sensor that reads the RPMs has a little quarter inch bolt that holds it on where it mounts right up underneath one of the fans that came off, but it fell just right to where it landed on one of the hydraulic hoses so unless you get up underneath there and really look you can't see it especially if it's laying on one of the hydraulic lines so i didn't see it the first time but i noticed it the second time thankfully it had a little bolt here in the toolbox on the tractor a pair of pliers got it mounted back up back up and running so thankfully solved that problem all right, we just dropped off our uh, last load of the day. It's uh, about 4.30. We got three loads in today. You know, I had that uh, filming to do with Bayer this morning, so we not able to get four in today. But the problem Zach uh, spotted a couple days ago has gotten significantly worse. I was hoping it'd hold enough long together to get our wheat hauled, but uh, it's not. But on the suspension on our truck, we got a leaf spring that goes under the axle, got an airbag on one end, and then on the other end, got a huge bushing. Uh, it, Zach noticed it started deteriorating, and well now it's completely gone and shot, and uh, on one axle, and then notice that uh, on the axle in front of it, the same bushing is starting to deteriorate quickly too, so we gotta get that fixed because uh, if that bushing goes out, there's nothing holding the axle in place on my truck. And that'd be a bad deal going down the interstate 70 miles an hour, you know, grossing 90,000 pounds. That could be a real bad deal. So we're going to get back to the shop, hopefully safe and sound, and get this sucker fixed. In other news, I petitioned CGB, which is where we're hauling our grain, to do something about this access road. I said I'd be willing to donate two cents per bushel for every bushel I haul as they'd have the sucker repaved. I don't think they're going to go for it, but this is actually the uh, good part of the road right here. You get up here to the end of the road where you turn on the highway, 
and it ain't here to tear your truck apart. They say the county absolutely refuses to do anything about it. They say the road is fine. Maybe in some third world country this road is fine. But not in West Tennessee. And it's certainly not helping uh, the suspension bushings on my truck, that's for sure. Uh, we'll go back home as soon as we can and hopefully these bushings won't give us too much problem on replacing them. <laughs> All right, we got back here at the shop, got the trailer drop, make it a little easier to work on. And these bushings right here, what I'm talking about, it's a big bushing that goes in the eyelet of this leaf spring. And we've got the airbags on the rear. This is on the passenger side. Walk over here to the driver's side, show you what I'm talking about. Y'all see a problem there? Yeah, it's a, uh, whatever, there's rubber or whatever it is in there, it is definitely gone. And we got nothing but metal on metal and it's quickly wearing away that, uh, that rod that goes through there. And if that rod breaks, there's nothing holding this side of the axle in place. It can just do that right there. And uh, 70 miles an hour, down a four lane, grossing 90,000 pounds. That would be a, that would be a pretty bad day. And it's hard to tell, but it looks like this front one, uh, looks like I see a gap up in there. So I don't know if it's out or about to go out or on its way out, but it's gonna get replaced too. And actually if these come off pretty easy and they're pretty easy to replace, we're just gonna go ahead and replace all four. Kelly's going to get parts and uh, we got, we got, we're getting four of these bushings, so. No, we're going to do uh, do these two before I put this truck back on the road. And if they're easy enough, we'll go ahead and do all four. Never replaced one of these before, but I mean, it looks to be pretty simple. We got two bolts there, but the thing is, is what do I need to support the truck with and how do I need to support it? I need to support the axle too, or just the truck frame. I'm not sure. Our uh, good hydraulic jack we've got over here on the green buggy because we've got it unhooked because Zach's using that tractor to spread fertilizer with and the standard uh, screw jack for the grain buggy is not meant to uh, hold the tongue up with it loaded. So we got a good hydraulic jack on there. We do have some other hydraulic jacks, but they're definitely not classified as good. But we've also got the forklift that I can use to pick up on the frame. So uh, probably gonna take a little playing around to find out what the best way to do this is. I've had this truck since about 2012. I know they hadn't been touched in, in the times that I've owned it. bolts are loose surprisingly and I haven't had to sport anything yet. I think in order to get this up I'm gonna have to lift the frame up because there's not enough room to get this bushing out from the shackle. Let me go get the forklift. Well, crap, it's still blocked in. Looks like I might have to take this shock absorber loose to let it pivot down. She ain't budget. God bless. <clears throat> Tarter than the other one. Been in my pull handle. Pop loose. Can't tell if I moved it or not.
There we go. It ain't been off in a long time. Smoking now. Hmm. Hmm. Time to call in the hard guns. Joel. Yes, I need to speak to somebody in service. In service? Yes, I'm a Matt Griggs at Griggs Farms. I've got a 2004 International 9200i that, uh, not sure exactly what they're called, but uh, there's bushings in the front of front part of the leaf springs on my air ride truck that the, the bushing has gone gone out. Like sear axle or like the rear suspension? The, the, re the rear suspension. I got one that's sure enough out, one that looks like it's going out, and well, I was just going to have all, all four of them replaced. Okay. Is, uh, uh, y'all, have y'all got an opening to get that thing over there and get it in soon, or y'all pretty backed up? Uh, we could get it in and out tomorrow. Okay. All right. I've got, I've got the parts on hand. Uh, what, what's the trick to replacing, replacing these things? Is it, I thought it was just going to be pretty easy. I don't know, but on, on international stuff, I don't know for sure, but some of Kenworth and Peter books, you got to press them in and out. Yeah. All right, because I, 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 yeah. I can't even get the leaf spring to drop down enough out of the shackle to even be able to get, to even be able to press oh, yeah. it they out. Can, they, they, they can be a bar and, and some know-how. They can be tough. All right. Well, uh, I, if, if it's okay with y'all, I'll just go ahead and bolt this thing back together and get it over there to you. That'd be fine. Uh, maybe it would be all right if I bring it by this evening, or I didn't need to wait until the yeah, morning. Oh, no, you can bring it tonight or tomorrow, whenever you want to. All right, I'll go ahead and get it on your lot then. Okie doke. Thanks. All right, bye. All right, after doing some further research, well, Kelly's been doing the research. <laughs> Apparently, there's some kind of press on there on that that pulls this thing down and presses it out. See, my problem is right now. So even when I lift up on the frame, I can't get this uh, eyelet to drop below here to where I could even try to press it out. And I thought this whole thing just kind of slipped out of the eye, but no, it's this bushing inside this big ground piece inside the eye. And why well, I mean, that sucker is, I mean, it's just plain old frozen. You heard the service manager saying those things, some of them can be a bear to get out. And I just don't have the proper tools. I could do it enough time and probably uh, probably several tanks of acetylene and stuff, but right now, be money well spent just to go ahead and get this thing over to the pros who've got the right tools to, to do it and just let them do it so we can get this truck back up and running. Because there, there's no telling how many hours it would take me to get this done without having the right tools. Yeah. yeah. Every single YouTube I've seen has that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have anything like that. <laughs> There's that, another one that I lost it, but it literally pushes the old one out, and you pull the new one in, and it literally just whoop right on in. Yeah, no way. So the part that I thought was going to be hard actually wound up being easy, and the part I thought was being easy is well, pretty much impossible with my tools. So, but hey, if if any y'all are truck experts, when y'all watch this, leave uh, leave in the comments how y'all would do it, nor using normal tools around the shop, so I know for the next time. But Meantime, we'll just get this thing back on the road because we still got a lot of wheat to haul and not a lot of time to haul it in. We're going to just go ahead and pay that, I don't know, I think it's like $175, $200 per hour labor rate. Oh. Oh, well. Yeah, but they might be able to get it fixed in three or four hours compared to us banging on it for two days. Yeah. But uh, an expensive year just got more expensive. We do have the parts on hand. That's what they, that's what they look like but I just ain't got no way to pressing it in and out, or at least not any way, any way easy. Well, there she sits, we got her, got her over there. Maybe uh, we ain't luck, we'll get a call tomorrow, come back and get it. Well, back out here this morning, finishing up a uh, side dressing application on cotton ground. 
got a uh, roughly 320 325 acres done yesterday and with the pickup yesterday afternoon I'd say it was a pretty solid day of running got moved over to the last big farm yesterday afternoon 160 568 acres over here and got a uh, Got about 61 acres done of it last night, or late yesterday afternoon. So, uh, co-op got out here about 8.15 this morning. I helped Matt get some things situated at the shop before I headed out here. Because we're going to be breaking out the spot sprayer this afternoon. Uh, with me going over all the cotton acres yesterday, I was kind of making mental notes. And unfortunately pigweeds are starting to pop and they're starting to pop out bad and I don't know why I mean they're they're starting to pop out in areas where we had them completely wiped out last year from where we've been fighting them from years prior to now this year they are back with a vengeance and worse than what they were before so I don't know what caused it i don't know if the seed bank under the ground where one or two maybe went to seed finally woke up and said hey we're gonna show up this year but we have quite a bit of work to do on several farms in just problem spots to get uh get these big weeds back under control so that's what we're gonna do this afternoon after i finish up side dressing but i've got a uh, hundred and 45 acres left to do. And the last of the nitrogen application for the year will be done. So maybe we'll ease up on Matt's pocketbook and uh, not make him and Kelly and Jocelyn sweat bullets for five or six months at least. Anyways, that's what I'm gonna try to get done. Check back in here in a little bit and see how far uh, see how far along I've made it. Well, that's it. Side dressing on cotton's done. All uh, fertilizer application is done until January of next year. Get back to the shop, rinse the uh, buggy off so this nitrogen doesn't sit up on it and eat everything up, and then. See what we're going to get into next.